Hey everybody, this is Dr. Destin Hendricks with Kyra Ms. K Specials. We're continuing our journey on our chronic pain treatment. This week's title is going to be called, Is Stress Causing My Chronic Pain? This lesson will look at stress and how it affects your chronic pain. We've been going on this journey here, and so we're starting to interconnect some different dots as well because we talked about the brain and the pain near matrix, basically how we looked at like the flight uh, the flight map where you can see like all the different areas that your planes are going into and when you experience pain it's the same thing as that so this week we're gonna look at how does stress make your chronic pain worse and your nervous system more sensitive um, you know we want to welcome you back and we wanted to see also how you've been moving uh, were you able to get in that five minutes of movement um, and you know, how many days are you exercising for? What did you think of the rehab board game? You know, comment, let us know. So this week, we want to start with some crazy stress facts. The lowest stress levels are recorded in adults older than 72. 80% um, of millennials are stressed about money. Teenagers report a stress level of 5.8 out of 10 during the school year. 45% uh, of college students seek counseling due to stress. Uh, about 14% of U.S. citizens uh, exercise regularly to handle stress. Stress can cause headaches. It can cause muscular aches and tightness. So that's where you're going to start to see like the connection between stress and the chronic pain. We're starting to introduce it with our headaches and our muscle aches. Stress can keep you from sleeping at night as well. We already talked about sleep and how important that is to our recovery and our healing process and calming down our nervous system. So the factors that cause you to have chronic pain, they can be looked at like a roaring lion. So just imagine you're sitting here, you're watching this video, and then all of a sudden a lion walks into the room. Okay, yeah, you're going to be pretty freaked out, right? It's roaring, it's pretty scary, it looks like it's about to eat you, okay? Um, now what would happen with that? Obviously you're not going to take a nap. You're gonna check your posture, or you're not gonna check your posture, you're not gonna wonder what's for dinner, you're not gonna be worried about how you're healing. Um, your body's not gonna be able to fight infections during that time. There's a lion in the room, you're, you're in fight or flight, and we'll talk about that. Uh, our bodies work the same way um, as the lion coming in the room to stress. This is really interesting, so we don't wanna peel back these layers too much. We're gonna break this into two parts. Uh, next week, we'll talk about chronic stress and cortisol in something called gas syndrome from Hans Selle, uh, general adaptation syndrome, about how the body goes into this, and then eventually how we can see um, health effects from it. But we just wanna kinda of touch on that a little bit here. So we're looking at more of the what happens initially when stress comes into your life. So there, there's various body systems. Uh, muscles, pain, sleep, immune, sympathetic, reproductive, digestive. When your body is not perceiving a threat and everything is good, your body, body systems are balanced. That's what we call homeostasis. It just means stasis for you know, stagnant, which is actually good in this case because your body is at equilibrium. Um, however, when a big threat, like a lion jumps in the room, your systems prioritize survival. And your body's natural balance is disrupted. You're wide awake, you're ready to run or fight. And so this is what we're talking about with what we call the autonomic nervous system. So with the autonomic nervous system, what that means is it's happening subconsciously. It's something that you're not in control of. Um, this is a primal type reaction that was designed to keep us alive when we weren't in a modern, uh, technologically advanced world. So you have two parts of this autonomic nervous system, this nervous system that you can't really control. And... And we're not saying that to mean that there's not a place where you can intercede with this, but we're talking about the initial reaction. So you have autonomic nervous system, and then it tears off into what we call the sympathetic, and then it tears off into the parasympathetic. So basically these two systems are fighting for equilibrium with each other. Your sympathetic is what we call your fight or flight, and then your parasympathetic is what we call your rest or digest. And so the, you know, the interesting thing is if you break it down into fight or flight and rest or digest, you can figure out things that are going to be going on in your body. So if you're in a fight or flight, you're getting more blood flow, more sugar to the muscles, you're getting more adrenaline, your pupils are dilating, uh, you're ready for muscle contraction because you're trying to prepare your body to get away from something or to fight something. And now if we're on the rest and digest, you know, you're going to be healing, 
you're going to be sending blood to the stomach for digestion and uh, intestines, I should say. You know, um, so yes, yeah, so that's kind of interesting on that part. Um, so when we have this uh, initial reaction, the, what we hope will happen is you know a zookeeper will come and it will take the lion away, and then the parasympathetic, parasympathetic autonomic version of the nervous system will be able to. Uh, calm everything down and get your body back into homeostasis so we don't start having this cascade effect which affects our health. Okay, so what does this have to do with you? Um, an ongoing pain is like a roaring, lion, a roaring lion in your life. And so what we mean by that is your lions in your life are your stress coping mechanisms, mood swings, uh, problems sleeping, financial stress. These are the lions in your life that are triggering you. And then these play into making your nervous system extra sensitive. You know, it's always by your side from the moment you wake up to the moment that you close your eyes. And, you know, we're talking about chronic pain at this point. Um, it's just amazing. We're going to get more into this, but you can also see... Uh, low libido, memory changes from having chronic pain, and we'll explain that as we get further into the next lesson. Now, what would you do if a lion cub came in the room? And let's say you're not afraid of you know lions, you might even actually want to go and pet it. Uh, so that would be a, a type of stress that we were able to adapt and to recover from. Um, you know, and your body can regain the homeostasis and the balance again. This is what we do with education backed with movement is when we have somebody in our office who's afraid to move with a new injury, we first teach them that it's okay to move and then we find out the ways that are safer than move. So it acts um, like a zookeeper who's basically taking the lion away or it makes the lion much smaller and more bearable like a baby cub. So when you start moving again, you'll start to notice increased focus, concentration, memory, and your ability to sleep. And now remember, chronic stress is affecting our endocrine system. So it's a fancy word for our hormone system. So kind of look at it like this office here. You know, it has uh, air conditioner ducts and vents. And your body is the same way as it's putting hormones throughout your body. Is stress playing a role in your chronic pain? Um, as you can tell, there's a really big link with stress and sleep. And this is why it's so important to have these chronic pain courses because inside offices, it's typically not integrating all this stuff in here with your sleep and your meditation, uh, your walking, your exercising, your treatments, uh, your nutrition. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring it all together for you. So stress has a huge connection with chronic pain. And next week we will look at the cortisol, which is when you actually have long-term stress and what that starts to do. Uh, it's going to blow your mind, but all that cascade effect does, or you know, the domino effect. The stress response that would happen uh, is the fight or flight, which we talked about. And these are some of the areas that get activated. Your adrenal glands, so that's the glands above the kidneys, but what they basically do is they send adrenaline to you. Your muscles, your language, so we talked about that, you become alert. Uh, you lose your loss of reproductive interest. Um, now, pain is a reaction to a stressor or a perceived threat from the brain CEO that we talked about last week. And, you know, these are the things that we talked about. These are the lions in your life, anxiety and fear, different explanations of pain from different people, previous felt treatments, constant stress, job issues. These are those yellow flags that we keep bringing up. Um, temporarily, we look at chronic stress uh, next lesson, but adrenaline decreases our ability to feel pain. But shortly after the temporary blocking of pain, a hormone reaction happens that aggravates the nervous system, which results in a person having a response from stress, anxiety, and fear. And we've seen this in combat. It's also been seen in surgery, even like litigation cases where like, you know, car accidents or slips and falls. So how can you treat your stress and the role it plays in your chronic pain? You can add meditation and other stress coping strategies into your life while continuing to use activity handout to do the one pain free movement that we've addressed. This time we want to move up to six minutes for three to five times a week. And we also want to continue playing the rehab board game two times a week. 
So you can see we're starting to build out a really nice pattern. So let's say that you're walking three days a week and then you're doing your board game in between those three days. And let's say the other days you're working on strategies like your sleep and you're working on your meditation and calming down your stress. And you know, if meditation is not your thing, that's okay. You can buy an adult coloring book. You can use a stress ball. Those are the fidget spinners. Uh, do yoga, take a walk. You know, the walking and the exercising, the reason why that's so important is it has so many benefits. Um, continue to slowly and routinely increase movement in your life. It's perceived as sore but safe. And remember, we need to move daily to rewire our brain with that neuroplasticity that we were talking about. You know, how the brain changes. It takes time, you know, the longer that you've been in chronic pain, the longer it takes for the brain to change. And that's why you see the return to functional capacity so fast but then there's a little bit of lag with actually getting the pain levels to drop down. So, you know, we always say in our office, it's the peaks and the valleys. Thank you for coming on this journey with us. Next week, we'll look at what happens when the lion stays in the room. We're going to be really hammering out cortisol, and then we'll actually look at some stress-related uh, diseases as well. Guys, we've already been building a cardio routine, <laughs> coming up with sleep strategies, pain journaling, learning how to strength train your core in a way that keeps your nervous system calm, and now we're uh, adding meditation and working on stress levels, and we're only just getting started. This is amazing. I hope you guys are taking advantage of this resource. And, you know, text us, call us. What questions do you have? What do we need to work on? Uh, we have a lot of stuff planned with this, though. Guys, thank you so much for coming on this journey, and we look forward to continue helping you. All right, guys, you have a blessed day and a great weekend.